Hello, this is Dr. Gandhi. Welcome to my video on performing a K-means cluster analysis using SPSS. In counseling research, we use K-means cluster analysis to group items together based on scores across multiple dependent variables. So looking at the fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS, I have an ID variable, and let's assume that these represent programs that treat substance use disorders. So you can see they have 50 programs here in the data set. And then post-test scores for depression, anxiety, and substance use. And let's assume that the higher the score, the greater the frequency, duration, and severity of the symptom. So in this situation, we could use a k-means cluster analysis to see how these programs group together based on these three scores. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is standardize these three scores. And I'm going to do that under Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Descriptives. I'll reset this. And I'm going to move Depression anxiety and substance use, the three dependent variables, the three post-test scores, over to variable and then down here you see the checkbox save standardized values as variables. I'm going to check that and click OK. Now it has created three new variables for us but it's interesting to take a look at this too before we go further. You see depression we have a mean of 47.7 it has the lowest standard deviation. Anxiety has the highest mean, 55.86, and the greatest standard deviation. And then substance use, 47.68, so very close to depression. And the standard deviation is a little greater than depression, but less than anxiety. So going back to the data view, you can see all disease scores for depression, anxiety, and substance use. So to run the k-means cluster analysis, we'll go to Analyze and Classify, and we want to select k-means cluster. This is what the dialog looks like by default. You can see that it specifies the number of clusters by default as two, so we'll go ahead and keep two for now. And I'm going to move over the z-score for depression, anxiety, and substance use into the variables list box. Iterate I'm going to leave as it's set by default which is a maximum iteration count of 10. And I will save cluster membership as a new variable for the second analysis but I'm not going to check that off at this point. That'll create a variable that will indicate the cluster membership for each of the programs here. And then under options the only change I'm going to make is I'm going to add the ANOVA table. Click Continue. So it's now configured to create two clusters. And I'll click OK. So you can see it provides initial cluster centers for cluster 1 and cluster 2. The changing cluster centers throughout uh, three iterations and then the final cluster centers. So let's take a look at the final cluster centers here. Uh, we can see the Z scores for depression, anxiety, and for substance use in cluster one and for cluster two. If you double click on this and highlight this region, you right click go to Create Graph, and then select Bar. It's going to insert a bar chart into the output. And you can see, based on just these two clusters, you have one set of programs where the depression and substance use score is very low, but the anxiety is slightly elevated. And another cluster where depression and substance use are very high and there's a slight decrease in the anxiety. 
So if we go down here to the ANOVA table, we can see that we have statistical significance for depression and for substance use, but we do not have it for anxiety. So this tells us that anxiety did not have a significant impact on determining which cluster a program was grouped into. And if we look down here at cluster 1 and cluster 2, we have number of cases in each cluster. You can see it's 21 in cluster 1, so 21 that look more or less like this. And then 29 in cluster 2 that look like this, where the scores for depression and substance use are elevated. So if you wanted to divide these programs into two clusters, that's what it would look like. Let's go into classify, back to k means cluster, and this time let's specify uh, three for number of clusters. I want to see what's going to happen if we try to divide these programs into three clusters. And under save, I am going to check cluster membership. Everything else remain the same. I'll click OK. We can see now it's divided the programs into three clusters. And for final cluster centers, I'll do the same thing. I'll double click and highlight the values, and then right click, create graph, and then bar. And we can see when we've divided it into three clusters, the three profiles. Uh, look a bit different, right? We have one where there's elevated scores for each of the dependent variables, so depression, anxiety, and substance use. Not as drastically elevated as what we see with cluster two, but they're all elevated. Then in cluster two, anxiety is very low, but depression and substance use are quite elevated. And then in cluster three, anxiety is decreased, but depression and substance use are greatly decreased. Now let's take a look here. In this ANOVA table, we have statistical significance for all three of the variables. So all three of these dependent variables had a significant impact on determining which cluster a program would belong to. And then as you can see for the number of cases in each cluster, Cluster 1 was the largest, so that's the one where the scores were all just slightly elevated. And then Cluster 2, where we had the very low anxiety, along with the high depression and high substance use, there was 8 cases. And there were 18 for Cluster 3, where all the scores were reduced, but depression and substance use were greatly reduced. So we have here three distinct clusters, and if we look at the data view, since I saved the cluster membership as a new variable in that second analysis, you can see for each program, like for 1001, you can see it's in cluster 3. 1002 is in cluster 2, 1003 in cluster 3, 4 is in 1, and so on. So all of the programs have the cluster membership here as the last variable. I hope you found this video on performing a k-means cluster analysis in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.